Today's first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 54, verses 1 through 3. Sing, O child's woman, you who have never given birth. Break into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle ruined cities. <clears throat> Our second reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's readings are about what happens when we're obedient to God's teaching and when we do extraordinary things for Him. When we do what God tells us to do, we benefit twice. First, we benefit from the fact that we have obeyed God and whatever God tells us to do is always good for us. If we've ever followed His urgings, we know that whenever we do what God tells us to do, things just tend to work out. When we run the other way, we usually run into a, a closed door or a brick wall. And if we don't listen to that, if we don't accept the signs, we always we keep bouncing up against that wall and we just don't get anything done. Secondly, when we obey God, He blesses us abundantly for our obedience. We can't ever outgive God. Everything we have comes from Him. From our talents, our skills, our loved ones, everything we have, this community, this country, it all comes from Him. When we're obedient, when we pray to Him, things just happen. In our first reading, God's telling the Israelites about their bright future because of their obedience. Now, we all know about the Israelites, their on-again, off-again obedience. They're obedient, things work out for them. They're disobedient, Things don't work out. They just never seem to learn. I hope we're smarter than that. I hope, hope we get to see when we look back over our lives, I hope we get to see and remember that when we were obedient, things worked out. So therefore, be obedient. Do what God says. But sometimes we forget too. As we know from our Bible 101 class, there was nobody in a worse circumstance than a widow that had no children. The church in the United States is kind of like that. We look at a lot of our churches and they're, and they're aging out. Their youngest people might be 50, 60 years old. Those are the kind of churches we had in Wisconsin. But, but here in Cambridge, we're blessed. We have, we have younger children. We have younger families. We have teenagers. But still... Our demographics of God's church in Cambridge don't match what's in Cambridge. There's a lot more kids out there. Goodness, Cheryl Ann and Ruth Ann were, were running around yesterday handing out bracelets, and they gave out 345 bracelets, mostly to little children and teenagers. 345. There's a lot of kids who don't know Jesus in this town. And I can tell you from teaching Awana for just over one year, that's a fact. They come to us in Awana and they want to know, well, who is God? They want to know who created God. So we have to start in the beginning. We have to walk it from that point. 
to tell them who God is. There's many people that we can reach out to yet. These children don't attend because their parents don't attend. But as we tend to reach out to them, when, when they start finding out what kind of community we have here at God's Church in Cambridge, they tend to stick. Pastor Ron brought Jason and Melissa to this church after they lived in Cambridge for three years. And they found out what a community we have here. That's all it takes, folks. Getting people here one time so they can find out how you love all over people. That's a fact of life. We just have to get the message out there. We have to do something extraordinary. Extraordinary is defined as going beyond what's usual, regular, and customary. We, that means we have to do something that we don't usually do. Maybe it's handing a Jesus bracelet out to a friend. Maybe it's, it's wearing a Jesus bracelet. And someone asks you, what does that mean? We have to do what's extraordinary. What's extraordinary is, after only 20 Awana classes, we now have a group of children who didn't know Jesus. Now they have this, this unquenchable desire to pray. If you want to see prayer in action, come to Awana classes on Thursday, and you're going to see 20 or 30 kids who want to pray. And when they don't get picked to pray, they get disappointed. They can pray before Awana class, or they can pray for grace. And they offer some, some great prayers. And that's only after 20 weeks. What if we had them for 52 weeks? What kind of transformation could we have over them? Better yet, what kind of transformation could we have over their parents? If they came here, witnessed the love that you people give to them. Give to everybody. Do you think that would have a change in them? That would change not only their life on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday also? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. I'd like to see the impact that would have on Cambridge. And, and we, we shouldn't be worried if things don't work out when we, when we give a breakthrough or when we give an invitation. Because as I said last week, we just have to redefine how we define failure. We shouldn't look at it as a mistake. We should look at it as a lesson learned. Okay, if it didn't work out this way, how can I change my approach? How can I change the way I say things? So we would never, ever fail at anything. We would just learn a lesson. That's a great way to go through life. After worship today, we have, we have booths set up there. I, I pray that everybody signs up for something. <clears throat> Give it a chance. See, pray to God now and then in our remaining moments and ask Him, Lord, what is that special talent you've given to me? that I can use for your people. We even have an opportunity to help Dave out in his tasks. <laughs> and we know that Dave is using every bit of what God has given him. We just need to walk around this church and see the smoke alarms and see that we finally have control for our air conditioners and that the stairs are painted. Not only the stair, but the tip so you can see where the end is. Dave's using every bit of his God-given talents. What do we have out there that we can use for God's church? When Israel finally became obedient and they were finally ready to do something extraordinary for God, he blessed them. We hear in Isaiah, Sing, barren woman, you who have never born a child. Burst into song, shout for joy, you who have never been in labor. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than any of her who has a husband. Folks, for a barren woman to have more children, that takes a miracle. And miracles happen when we're obedient to God. God so abundantly blessed Israel that their homes were bursting at the seams. We hear further in that reading, enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense for you will soon be bursting at the seams. We cannot outgive God. If we start doing the extraordinary for Him, this church is going to be bursting from its seams. And then we're going to have to figure out, what do we do? 
Do we go out sideways? Do we go out highway? Look at the can't see separating these people and the energy and the love we have when we gather together. No matter how big we grow, I just pray that we can stay in one spot to share God's love. And this is going to happen by everybody in God's church in Cambridge doing what he wants us to do, listening to what the Holy Spirit tells us, guiding us, and actually doing it, committing and getting it done. When I was in, in church development in Wisconsin, we were studying large growing churches, and we went to Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City. And this place is huge. They have one campus on acres of land. <coughs> And they have another campus downtown. They have 22,000 members. 22,000 members. That's only 11 times the size of Cambridge. <laughs> and on weekends, 13,000 people worship. And I was walking around campus and I'm looking at all this and I said, Lord, how does this happen? How does a church get this big? And then I started talking to the staff and I started talking to the volunteers. And you know how that place got so big? They all knew God's vision. They knew it. They executed it. They said, every person said, we are a community of people in Kansas City knowing, loving, and serving God together. That sound familiar? Mm -hmm. huh. Knowing God, loving God, serving God. That's what we have. The only thing missing is that community thing. When we become a community, not just individuals that love God, love others, and serve both, that's when the explosion happens. And God told us He wants us, He wants that out of every one of us. Now we can we can all love God, love other people, and, and serve them from our homes. But think of the power when we come together and do it as one team. That's huge. That's huge. There's not one individual on the Cambridge football team. There's a team. Right? That's how you guys are 5-0 and all now. Not because of one person trotting out to the field and saying, I gotta crank up my stats. They're winning because they come together and coach says, Coach says, I gotta do this part. I gotta pull this guy this way. I gotta pull the guy this way. So the running back can go up the middle. We've got to gather together as a community and do what God says. Listen to the word of God in Isaiah 43. But forget all that. God say, forget that old stuff. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do for you. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the wasteland. God's telling the community of Israel, if you follow me obediently, you can forget all that old stuff. I'm going to do something new. God's saying, remember that stuff I did for you in Egypt? All those plagues that happened to the Egyptians? How I wiped out the entire army? How I fed you every day for 40 years? Gave you water and your clothes and shoes didn't wear out? Forget that. I got something better. I got something better for you. He said, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do doing something new. God is waiting for an obedient community here in Cambridge to do what he's asked us to do. And then he's going to say the same thing. That old stuff, nothing compared to what I'm going to do for you. Can you imagine an entire Christian community? What would that be like? Incredible. In 2 Corinthians, we hear, remember a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Everyone gathered here today has an opportunity to sign up to do something extraordinary. To plant a lot of seeds. And when you plant a lot of seeds, the harvest is incredible. 
we just got to plant. We all need to do something extraordinary for God beginning today. Anything. We all need to go beyond what we usually do. Because that's what extraordinary is. Doing things we don't usually do. That means instead of going home after work, maybe we come to Awana for a while. Or maybe instead of going home, you've got special talents, you come up and you practice singing. Or, or maybe it's, it's any one of the million things that, well, not a million, but those things are on the table. <laughs> Find something. Do something extraordinary. Try it out. If you don't think you're going to be good at it, who knows? Give it a try. You might be fantastic at it. We all need to plant seeds. And when that happens, we can be like the disciples gathered on Pentecost Sunday. It started out with 120. And all of a sudden, Peter and the guys got the, and the women got the guts to leave the upper room. And because all 120 believers decided to leave that room, miraculous things happened. And 3,000 new believers were added to that community. Read the scriptures listed in the bulletin. You'll, you'll hear the story when Peter stepped out. 3,000 in one day. Which brings us to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. All, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. To fellowship, like here. Sharing in meals, like we're going to do in a couple minutes. And to prayer, which we do all the time. This is a praying church. But the most important fact is all the believers, every last one of them, stepped out in faith. Nobody, nobody looked inside and said, you know, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can leave the upper room. They all did. They all left. The entire community, they totally bought into God's vision. And they left that upper room. They acted on their commitment. And as Jean Paul Sartre says, commitment is an act, not a word. When we put our name down on that list, we got to do it. We have to get the job done. All the believers met in one place, shared everything they had. Now we don't have to, we don't have to give all our finances. That would be crazy. We'd all have to live here. And then Dave would be crazy. So he'd have to clean up after us. So we can't do that. But what we can do is we can use every last bit of our energy using the gifts that God gave us. That we can do. All the believers, all the believers here can do what God asked them to do. All the believers in God's church in Cambridge need to do something. Malachi. God tells us in Malachi that you cannot outgive me. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring all your energy to church and then take it out in the street. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. This place would be bursting at the seams. His blessings would blow out of here and they'd run all over Cambridge and then we'd just see a revival. And then he says, try it. Try it. Put me to the test. You want to put God to the test? <laughs> be obedient to him. See what happens. Actually do what he says and see what he'll do in your life. God promises us that when everybody does what he says, I'll transform the place. Because he tells us, and we know, we see it in Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved each and every day. Would that be amazing? Would that be amazing? So after we pray to the Father and we ask Him, Lord, what is it you want me to do? And after the praise band blesses us and sends us out to mission, we're going to share a meal. We're going to think, Lord, what does you want me to do? Amen?